The next two stages are all about identifying the users of the current system and the proposed system. So in here you need a good understanding of the organization, the company, the group, um, who are the people that work there, what do they currently do, identifying their current roles and then going on to say what are their needs and what are the limitations. So if we have a look at this first student, they've um, put the identification of the prospective users, it's section 1.3 and if you just pause the video and have a read through. So you can see this person has actually grouped them into um, three categories. There's one person who is the managing director of the company, um, they're explaining what they currently do, but then the other staff are grouped into either technicians or admin staff. So if you have got an organisation or company that has lots and lots of people at work there, for example a college, you might split it into teachers, students, um, curriculum team leaders, senior management, something like that. Um, if there's only a few people that work there, what I would do is identify everybody by name and by role. Once you've identified the prospective users, then you have to talk about their needs and their limitations. So if you have a look at this one, they've got here, for example, technicians, they must be able to store all data in the system that was recorded on the audit forms, record sale price and markup price, um, apprentice technicians will need to the system to provide help in understanding different data fields. So it goes through explaining exactly what different people have and their needs. If you look at uh, then Glenn Fowle, uh, he's a managing director, this is what extra this person needs compared to the other two groups. And all staff have access to view all data. Have a read of this bottom paragraph as well. Just pause the video now. So this talks about some of the limitations. It is important to cover limitations as well as what is actually needed. Okay, this is a, a slightly different one. Uh, this person's grouped it together into one paragraph. Do try and use spacing uh, when you set it out. So. I think it's always good to, to put main head in. So we've got here, um, we've got three people that will be at the Cleefox Builders Merchants who will use the system. So put each of them three people as a separate head in. John, what's his surname? He's a managing director. What does he currently do within the system? Talk about this person. What's his current skills? Then we've got Jane. She's a credit controller. But what does that involve? Give the user something to read to explain each of these. We've got Denise, she's the company secretary. She will be using some nearly every day to look up customer details so they can be contacted but why? What does she need to be able to do? Explain her role. So within that paragraph on the prospective users, they are identified, they're not really explained from there. But this person has gone on to talk about what each of those users needs from the system. Now the important thing for this one, all the staff will need the same needs from the system. Um, pause the video, have a read through these. So within this one there are a real clear set of what the users want and really specific points. So it needs to, for example, create a list of all statements generated to keep track of statements sent to customers. An email that is automatically sent to suppliers with regular products they order. To automatically calculate the account limit based on customers' credit history. Create a graph to display the popular selling products. This person has really got in there, has interviewed and found out exactly what those users need from a new system and that is important this is going to feed into our um, requirements later on and we've got some limitations here as well so pause the video have a read through the limitations some limitations may be the hardware we've got to actually create the program on it may be that they want something that's mobile phone based but 
limitation of visualbasic.net and what we're going to do in this space of time could be that we're only going to get it working on the standalone computer it could be that it needs to work across a network again limitation at the moment may be that we can only get it working standalone um, it could be anything to do with staff training that we're going to deliver um, it could be getting all the past information exported from their old system into a new system that could be a limitation could be actually the software that they've got on the computers the operating system that could be a limitation so have a think about the limits here's the third one uh, if you want to have a read through this section pause the video now and pause the video now to read through the rest and here we've got one more identifying prospective users and also the user needs and limitations again I would like you to number each section so if the analysis is section 1 this will be 1.3 and this will be 1.4 so do use the numbering system um, and as I said previously sometimes rather than having a bulk paragraph it's better if we had identification of the prospective users and we had the name of somebody then their job title what they currently do the name of somebody else the job title what they do so it's clear so rather than trying to find the information in the paragraph it is there clearly stated to me uh, pause the video if you want to read through this and pause the video and have a read through the rest but that is the user needs and the user limitations and the identification of the user section.